In this next video, we're going to be talking about different types. And throughout the series, I might have alluded to different types a little bit, but let's just describe them explicitly. Again, like many things um, throughout CMU CS Academy, you didn't need to know everything exactly, all the details to be able to kind of get by, but we're getting complex enough that these little details can kind of start to matter. And then also just the more you know, you know, knowledge is power, the more you know, the more different things you can do and the more things you can create, right? The less barriers to, the, to whatever you want to make uh, are there. Okay, so, so far we've seen we can make variables be equal to all sorts of things. We've seen something like x equals five or name equals, you know, Mr. Adler. Um, we can set variables to be all sorts of things. Let's see, what else have we done? Integers, so here, I mean, we're just kind of going, I'm gonna make a variable equal, equal to each different type of thing. Um, we could potentially have like bool, oh, I can't use that, boolean equals true. Um, I could say y equals 7.89. And then I, sh you know, I could do something like my shape equals circle at 200, 200, and 20. So these are the five different types that we're going to talk about. Um, you can store any of these things in a variable. You can name your variable whatever you want, as we've seen before. On line one over here, we've got what's called an integer or maybe an int. And it's just a number. It's a number with no decimal. We've got an integer. Um, this is used, we've seen all over the place for the counter pattern, for locations of things, for uh, storing just like an HP or how long it's been since something else. Very, very useful. Um, next up, we've got what's called a string. Here we made a variable called name. And when you've got a collection of letters uh, or maybe even a collection of words, which each word is just a collection of letters, between double quote or a single quote, it doesn't care if it's a double quote or a single quote, that's what we call a string. And it's just holding on to a bunch of single letters, which we call characters. Um, you could just have it be a single character, um, or you know you could have it be letters and dots. You can even put like Mr. Adler, um, I don't know, four or something like that. This whole thing is one string. It's a collection of letters, spaces, symbols, and stuff like that. This is used often for labels. Uh, we've used it for, for debug print statements and stuff like that. And yeah, you know, just storing on to words and, and characters and stuff. Uh, this right over here is called a Boolean and we've used this ever since we've been using ifs. We have a special word true, a special word false. Notice how they turn pink. These are our two Boolean values. A Boolean, um, unlike a string or an integer, um, it can only ever be two values. It could be true or it could be false and that's it. Uh, they're very useful for checking, you know, if you want to do something else, if you want to do something else. Um, and it's just, yeah, an inherent value of it could be true or it could be false. Next over here, we've got another number. This is what we call a float, but this is really our decimal numbers. Um, that's all it is. Works the same as an integer. You can put it as your value for a label. Um, your coordinates, I believe we saw, can be decimals as well all sorts of things, you know, you just, you might want to have a decimal. Maybe you just want to store it as just a whole number. So an int would just be for you want whole numbers. A it's called a float when you're adding a decimal to it. And then finally, these are in, in the lesson, they call them shapes. Uh, I might call these objects too. I've referred to these as objects before. And it's just all the different things, right? We've made circles, but you can also make um, you know, stars, but then you'd need to add other parameters. We've seen all this before. These are different types. Um, now the reason I'm explicitly pointing out the different types is because in videos coming up, we're going to look at some special characteristics of different types. So you just got to know the things that I'm talking about explicitly. Um, and we'll, we'll do one little example over here 
where there are cases where when you're creating things or maybe calling a function that it's going to require to use a particular type for, uh, for making it. So for example, for a star, it expects um, integers or maybe floats for the coordinates, integers or um, floats for the radius, and this probably explicitly requires an integer for the number of points. I can't have 5.5 .5 points. And if you run something like that, and you get, you're using a type that it's not supposed to use, right? When you make a star, the number of points shouldn't be a decimal, because how can you have 5.5 .5 points? You might get what's called a type error, and we can see that right over here. And the type error is just going to tell you, hey, I was expecting one type, but you gave me another one. So star dot points should be an integer, but 5.5 .5 is of type number, um, or maybe float, uh, you know, we're not going, we didn't talk about number as one of the types, but that's fine. Um, basically, it's not an integer. It should have been an integer. So here they're telling you, hey, I expected this type. You gave me this other type. An integer means, well, it's got to be a whole number. So if I go back to um, switching this over to just five now and we run it, we'll be happy, no errors. Um, similarly, we might get an example where we have, maybe we're making a label like my label. And we can start with a, um, I don't know, a like message, message, and then the coordinates at 200, 100. And labels, oops, I have to, sorry, that's not a type error. I just need to call it my label equals a label. Oh man, oh my goodness, a label. And now it won't complain anymore. We see message over there, 200, 100. Um, yeah, if you put instead an integer here, it's gonna be okay. It's okay to have an integer value. I wonder if it's okay with having a float value. Um, it's okay with having a float value too. So sometimes the input requires like if I tried to put this into a string, it's gonna freak out. It doesn't, it's like, hey, I need an integer here, or at least a float here, you're giving me a string. Hey, I need, I, we saw it needed an integer there, you can't even give it a float. Other times, the inputs can be different things and it's okay taking a float in, or an integer, or a string. Um, so looking over here, again, um, star.radius should be a number, but the 20 that we input was of type string, that's a problem. It doesn't want a string over here. It wants a number. Or maybe let's check to see if it's okay with a float. Yeah, it looks like it's okay with a float. Um, I think, I, I guess I'll show one other thing over here. Just now that we have a little bit more of an explicit understanding of our types, there's, I'll add one other thing just because this is part of that same lesson in CMUCS Academy, which is we can sometimes, if we'd like to, convert things from one type to another. Um, and I'll just show one for this one because in the CMU lesson, they only show this first one in the first lesson. Um, we're allowed to convert anything from any type into a string by saying, all right, I'm going to just take some value and say str built-in function. You can see it's purple, uh, str and maybe I'll say like 45. And now it'll take that number 45, that integer 45, and convert it to a string. And you might be thinking, well, why would I wanna do that? And uh, let's make a sample little program over here just to, just to give an example as to why you might consider doing that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up to 50 just for a little sample program. Make the size equal to maybe 15. Let's see if we're okay over here. Eh, maybe it's a little, let's make it 20. How's that? Wow, 30? I want it to be kind of big enough. 30 should be good, all right. Uh, and now what we're gonna do is, let's define an on mouse press with an X and Y coordinate. And we will move my shape dot center x equals x and my shape dot center y equals y and we'll also update my label dot 
value to equal, um, and now here is a little like weirdness. Um, oh, because I, I didn't talk about adding strings together. So we'll talk about that here at the same time as we're talking about converting things. We can just set my label dot value equal to um, my shape dot center x comma my shape shape dot center y. Is this going to complain? I think this might complain. Oh no, look at that. It's happy about that. So we set the value equal to the new coordinates and we can see the new coordinates of the thing over here. So, okay, it's okay with that, sending it two different values and it's just like, all right, you're giving me this and that. Um, but let's say I wanna say like new coordinates. Can I do a little, little comma there? Will it complain? And all right, so it's all right except it's inside of parentheses and new coordinates has quotes in it. I don't really like that. And we see the commas over there. So what we can do is do what's called string addition. And instead of putting a comma between them, I can add. And the, the plus sign here, when you're going between strings, it's actually going to just kind of like put one, it's just gonna glue them together. The issue is my shape dot center X and my shape dot center Y over here uh, they're not strings, they're integers. So if I add these together, uh, either we'll get an error or something's gonna look really weird. Yeah, we're gonna be getting another type of type error saying, hey, you tried to add a string to an integer and then another integer on top of that at the end and saying, hey, I, I can't add strings to integers automatically. Um, so what we can do is using that string conversion function, we can just say, hey, I know that I wanted to say, new coordinates and then I want to add on my shape dot center X to to the um, sorry let me just repeat because there is a announcement there oh what was I saying new coordinates in quotes and I'd want this to add as a string center X and center Y the issue here now is that it's not actually holding on to the value center X or center Y it's literally just gonna once I click once it'll say you know coordinates, my shape dot center X, my shape dot center Y, that's no good. So the way we deal with that, and I'm sorry if I'm starting to sound scatterbrained after the announcement distracting me, um, the way to deal with that where we don't get the type error and we don't just print out explicitly the, the words my shape dot center Y or my shape dot center X is we'll take this integer and convert it to a string. So it's still gonna get the value my shape dot center X, still that number, whatever the coordinates are, but then we're gonna say, hey, by the way, I just want you to treat that as a string. And this too, I want you to treat that as a string as well. And so now what we get is, and there might be a little issue here, once I click, new coordinates, 132, 182, but it looks kind of gross. It really looks like, what is that, 132,182? We don't want that. So what we'll have to do here is toss in just another little, custom string comma in there. And this way we can now say new coordinates colon and then the coordinates with a comma between them. And it looks nice. We don't have that weird kind of like automatic comma between anything, parentheses around these and, and uh, quotes around it. We've got a little program that as I click around the star moves and we have the label saying new coordinates updating with with the coordinates there. Um, now, all that to say, this is confusing. A nice and easy way to deal with this would just be to make two labels, one that has the string in it, or maybe even three labels, one that has the string and two others that have the uh, coordinates, but putting it all in one together gives you the, the ability to, hey, it's gonna make it the right size, right? It's automatically gonna adjust the size depending on how many digits we've got here. So you don't need to worry about giving enough spacing and, uh, you know, I don't know. Anyways, I feel like this went off the rails. Hopefully you followed along, at least with the beginning where we have our different types. We can convert to strings. Uh, and we also added some string addition in over there uh, where we can kind of like put words together. Um, I think that's about it. We're going to continue with more unit nine after this. 
talking about more different types and kind of manipulating some different types that we haven't talked about too much. We really haven't messed around with strings too much so far in this curriculum, and we'll get a chance to explore those a little bit more, which will be pretty cool. Um, all right, see you on the next one. Peace out.